All right. Mm, 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 mm. GSAMP, second call of February. We're having this call on February 22nd, which is pretty cool because it's, it's, it's one of those like astrological moments where it's called a 222 portal. Two is the energy of like divine feminine frequency. It's also the energy of doing it together. And then it's like the fact that it's triple because it's the second month and the 22nd day, 222. It's, it's like doing it together, but also with the help of, you know, much of our families, of our families, of whatever that means, our soul families, our galactic families, our, our families, I think some of our families span even beyond the universe, but that's okay. We don't need to go that far right now, even though I like to. And we're working on a really profound, intense second or the third already. Karen is the second. There's only two calls per month. Um, we're working on a really intense theme this year, which is as a group held within a high frequency container that we're all feeding into, to be willing to go into the places in our energy bodies where we hold traumatic emotions, where we hold the traumas that we dissociated from by learning to go hang out in our minds and and then the, the these energy blocks never get processed and we just keep adding more and more mental stuff on top i, ta I talked a lot about it at the beginning of the month like i really gave you a, a lowdown of what that looks like that map of reality i will bring it up over and over again during the year because the more we understand how this works the more we understand how the map of reality that we built as children to survive in the world is literally what our very archaic the very archaic part of our brain that works with association created as meaning and as beliefs that led to what we call our bs our belief system that map of reality of how the world is you know, that map of reality is everything you have come to believe is true in order to not have to feel, in order to not have to feel the actual trauma within you. You know, if part of your map of reality is it's not safe to express myself creatively in the world, what that belief is actually pointing to is that wound of having expressed yourself and having received some kind of trauma from it. And it's like, if we just stay at that map of reality surface, we walk around in our lives and we're, it's like everything we're doing is a reaction. It's all reactive. We're doing this to avoid this. You know, if I'm a good girl, then I won't get pooped on. Okay, okay, okay. That's my map of reality. So what's the map of reality behind that is if I'm myself, I will get hurt. If I'm creative, people will hurt me. I will be screamed at. People will be angry, et cetera, et cetera. And then the beauty of it is that because we're divine beings <laughs> and we came to, you know, clear the field and help humanity heal, it doesn't work. <laughs> These associations that we built in order to prevent ourselves from feeling the deeper pain they don't work because if, if even if we do that, if I'm a good girl, then people will treat me nicely. At the, the reality, and we all know that this happens, you know, that other part comes in, but I did everything right and I still got called wrong, you know, and therefore, and, and then whatever that is, whatever that therefore is, which is what we were talking about two weeks ago, whatever that is, that's the closest we manage to get to actually feeling what the core wound is and the, the reaction in our body to it. And also, I think I give the example of, for me, it's like sulking in anger. You know, if I'm a good girl, then if I absorb all the negative energy around me, then my, my, my parents will be, you know, peaceful and I'll be safe in the house. But I go back downstairs and I still get pooped on and I still get screamed at and I still get this and I still get that. And therefore, 
like, it doesn't matter how much I do, it'll never be enough. And then what's left for me to do? Like my map of reality is whatever I do, it'll never be enough. What's left to do? I go back in my room. I go hide in my room alone. The only place I'm safe. And maybe I sulk in anger, you know, to avoid feeling how much that hurts. It's like that, that thing after the therefore is a really, really powerful gateway to figure out what's really going on underneath it. For some people, it'll be more like a victim thing. It's like, <laughs> and if you go deep enough underneath that, you might discover that there's an energy that's like, therefore, I should just fucking kill them all. And that's like so unacceptable. <laughs> it's so unacceptable. You're a five-year-old thinking about killing your parents. You're like, oh my God, <laughs> that you just, you need to dissociate from it to, to survive. And so then your map of reality is all like, it's all like a bunch of jumbled stuff. And it's very small. Our maps of reality are very small. It's like the whole world and your map of reality. You know, and you're like <laughs> walking around in there. And the whole world is constantly threatening to challenge your map of reality. Because even though you do the if then, <laughs> most of the time it doesn't work. It's such a good example from Tahu the other day. Uh, when we were talking uh, separately, you know, and she's like, okay, like, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to drive him to work. I'm going to make his lunch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to be helpful. I'm going to be this. And then like get downstairs and it's like, it's just get crap from people. It's like, well, why didn't you do that? How come you didn't take care of that? Oh my God. You're so no, no, no. And you're just like, <clears throat> it just deflates you. Like, you're like, what? And then that allows whatever that deeper, <laughs> whatever that deeper thing is underneath, it allows it to come up. And man, we have difficulty accepting that whatever comes up after. It's a hard one to look at. It's a hard one to look at. And that's, that's, that can get you really close to actually feeling what you need to feel in there. Because un under that is, we're starting to get really close to the core pain. You know, the core wound, whatever you want to call it. So I just want you to know that I am a thousand percent with you and I am a thousand percent doing this work really deeply right now. And please understand that the deeper you go into feeling these energies, it does, it's, it's, it's scary it feels like it'll swallow you. It feels like it feels like you'll drown in it. You know, like in our 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 masculine energies, like this will annihilate me. I am powerless in front of this, and it kind of freaks out, and then it wants to go back into action. And the feminine side is more like, you know, it's it's too much. I'm too much. I'm too much for everyone. I'll never be able to feel this and be held by others, and and then and then it. it goes into its own variation of collapsing itself. And that's what we want to do for each other in this container is to hold the space that allows us to start feeling these deeper things. And it's not like, okay, I'm just going to go feel them and cry for eight hours. No, it's about being able to tap into them and to bring the frequency of your heart and your conscious divine self into that energy, into that energy, because that energy is trapped, right? It's like trauma happens, <gasps> inhale, sh limbic kicks in, the dissociation of the thought and the actual emotion, all that happens in a split second. And that dissociation leads to that being stuck somewhere in the body and to your mind working overtime, trying to make up stories about how to avoid feeling that and what it needs to do to not feel that. And what we're trying to, what, what we're doing this year is we are becoming more and more aware of this. Cognitively, super important. We need to understand this process with our minds or else the mind will constantly interfere with the process and try to protect you from going to feel it 
because that's its job. <laughs> the, the job of your mind is to make sure that it stays healthy and doesn't break, right? So the more we're able to train your mind to understand cognitively what's going on, the more it's going to be willing to be a partner with us and let us go feel these things. And the more we, and then it's like a loop, the more we feel something that's there and actually release it, the more the mind's like, oh, that didn't kill us. Oh, okay. And it's a little bit more willing the time after. The time after it's like, okay, I, I, okay, I know what's going on. I know what's happening. We're, we're, we're doing this thing, right? Where we're, yeah. And you're like, yes. And then you, it starts being a partner. That's why a lot of the teaching that I try to give you, or that I give you, is at the cognitive level first. So that the cognitive level of your brain, which is the higher brain, grasps what's going on. So when the lower brain kicks in, which is your survival system, we've got allies going on. We've got your heart being willing to be open and, and inviting and welcoming to the process and a cognitive brain that's able to be like, okay, it's okay. It's okay, body. So you don't have to freak out. Okay, it's okay, survival brain. I understand what's going on. You don't have to like, because your survival brain cannot itself on its own shift out of its defense structure. Not because it's incompetent. <laughs> it's nothing like that. Because it is run by programs that are reactive. It is not able to do abstract thinking. We have to change the program. We have to change the, associate, the association that's been put in there that then gets triggered all the time whenever something is getting close to making you feel something that feels dangerous to the defense structure. So I want you to keep having fun with that idea of playing with the if, then, therefore, but. Kami and I just watched the first call. You know what I'm talking about? Because it'll really help you get more and more clear on what your map of reality looks like. You know, your, our map of reality is, it was built by the time we were nine years old. Okay, this is not complex. <laughs> this is not a complex world that your limbic brain built for you. It is basic rules of how do I belong? How do I keep my body safe? How do I make sure that others don't reject me or hurt me? And all that was built by a childlike consciousness. So we go into these places where these emotions have been trapped in the body and we bring new energy into them. It's not even about, let me, let me explain to you why you don't have to be worried about blah, blah, blah. That part of your brain doesn't work like that. This is a big mistake that we do. You know, we start, I used to do that. Like at, at a certain point, I was, I was like, I was about to have a burnout because I was like, trying to converse and talk with like 13 different fragments of my inner child and trying to give them what they need. And, 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 and it's like, at a certain point, you realize you're, this is, it's never going to end. It's never going to end if you do it like that. You know, there's an energy in you that is, I am the energy of, I need and I don't get. It doesn't matter how much you try to give to it. It is the energy of, I need and I don't get. It is run by the program, I need and I don't get. Even if you get, it's like, but I need and I don't get. Okay, well, here's a million dollars, but I need and I don't get. Okay, uh, here's 16,000 candies, but I need and I don't get. It doesn't matter what you get. The program can't comprehend it. And this is really, really important to realize. Because you could spend the next 30 years of your life trying to answer the needs of all these programs running in you. And you'll discover that it doesn't really work. They're still there. You know, anyone that's, uh, ego is a program as well. Ego is like that too. Ego's like, okay, if I get that, then I'll be happy. Yeah, you know what? You get it. And it's like, it take what? Make five, five minutes, maybe five years later. Yeah, but, nah, 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 nah. you know? So this is not how we do it. We do it by bringing love into there and by holding that love field in there with no 
there's no discourse. There's no, there's no need to try to communicate with words to parts of us that are mostly pre-linguistic. It's like they're deep, deep emotional reactions. They need us to hold the field while they get processed. They need us to hold the field and let them know that it's safe for them to be felt. Okay? And that, that's, that's huge. And it's much more effective than spending 10 years trying to talk with them and give them everything they want. Like it's how to explain this. They're trapped at a certain age. It doesn't matter how much you try to teach them. It doesn't make them grow up. You, you are the one that needs to bring the grown up energy into there so that that energy feels safe being processed, which can look a lot of ways. It can look like screaming, hitting pillows, shaking, crying, you know, having a completely irrational reaction. It can look like a whole bunch of different stuff, but it's, it's in the body. It's not, you know, I'm going to get into that a little bit next month about what something that happens often when we're about to go hit, touch the thing. And then we don't even do it on purpose, but like boom, we recycle it up in the defense structure and then it creates more pain. <laughs> and then we, we didn't even get to the thing. So, so I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I just really want us to hone into this. This is about feeling it in the body and bringing new energy there, bringing new conscious energy in there. There's nothing to do there's no discussion to have. There's just presence to hold and let it kind of, uh, however, it's going to melt. Melt's not the proper word, but dissolve, melt, transmute, whatever, whatever we want to, whatever verb we want to use for that transform. And that's a key, key, key piece. The mind wants to participate and it will give you cues sometimes. Oh, you know, like, oh, I can feel that it's related to a past life or something. Okay, fine. Thank you, mind, for helping. And then get back to feeling. Get back. Feeling is not, thinking and feeling are not the same thing. So, fine. The mind wants to give information. That's fine. Don't get stuck in what it's saying. Don't get, don't, don't bring yourself back up there when it's doing that. It's kind of like, okay, thank you for the information. And hone back in, hone back in and stay there and breathe and stay there. That is the most powerful thing you can do. And that for most people is the most gut-wrenching. We will do anything to not stay there. <laughs> you know, oh, I have to reorganize all my files by alph alphabetical order, you know, <laughs> just like, or I have to vacuum everything in my house now. I have to, it's like, mm, really? Like, <laughs> So just catch it when that, that wants to happen. Just keep bringing yourself back to feeling it, feel it. If it helps you, just realize that these energies in you are trapped. Wherever they are, they're trapped. They cannot do this on their own. So your willingness to go there and be with them It's, it's divine. It's divine. Just like being able to forgive is divine. And on, on the subject of forgiving, that's the beauty of this. We go in these places and we hold a space and we flow that divine love in there. And eventually what happens is that these energies dissolve. The defense structure that was on top of them to protect them doesn't have anything to react to anymore. So it starts to loosen up. And then we can actually forget. We can actually move on. We can actually stop being stuck in the past. And be now. Because that's what, that's what it means to forgive and forget. You're completely here and now. There's nothing left of the past. Wow. I want that. <laughs> Where can I buy that? 
So tonight's the second call of the night. And what we normally do on the second call, and what we will continue to do, is source downloads. So I have some pretty amazing ones that came in today as I was working on this. And I'm really looking forward to sharing them with you. I'm going to start them. I'm going to just wrap up this presentation. And then we're going to go into source downloads. I'm more than, if you want to lay down, if you want to like do whatever you want for these, we're really going to open the crown and the heart. And we're just going to let these downloads pour into our system. My biggest goal right now is for us to work with universal intelligence all the way into our cellular intelligence and allow the intellectual intelligence to observe what's going on without, you know, its true role is to process and digest what happened after it's happened that's that's kind of most of the time the true role of the mind but it's, it likes to try to do stuff in advance but that's its true role so this is not an intellectual process this is not a mental process i will show you this technique to really tap into that flow and we're going to do a bunch of downloads and when i feel that it's when i start getting this <laughs> this enough from the field that we're in will stop the downloads and then we can just kind of have fun being together and talking a little bit hi <sighs> all right yeah i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to put this part of the video up on youtube again so because like I really want to make sure that the teaching is available for free and that those who feel called to join us to come into the work we do after the presentation part understand what what's the what's the presentation about and and then can decide if they want to come join us. So if you hear this and you want to know what we're doing after, come join us. <laughs> 